Hello there and welcome back to the Steel City Sports Podcast and today we have a pretty big trade going down today. Uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis has been traded to the Boston Celtics in a three-team trade. Uh, now to some people this might not seem like a big deal just because uh, you know there's no all NBA players in this trade and there's no current all-stars you know from last year's all-star team in this trade. However, um, Chris Stapps Porzingis is going to the best situation he's ever been a part of. Um, people forget back when Porzingis was back with the Knicks, he was viewed as one of the most valuable young assets in the league. And uh, we're starting to see him head back towards that trajectory because you know he obviously dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his tenure with Dallas. That's kind of why they, uh, a big reason why they gave up on Chris Stapps. Um, and then getting to Washington, he had one of the best seasons of his career this year, very quietly because he was with the Wizards. But he averaged 23 and 8 on good uh, efficiency, especially from three. And what did Boston give up to get Chris Stapps? So we're going to go through um, this for all three of the teams obviously, Boston, Memphis, and Washington. And I'm going to go through and give my opinions on each of them. So, yeah, we'll start with Boston here. I think this is a home run to get this. I know that their biggest need was probably getting more of a uh, facilitator on this team as opposed to adding another big man. You know, they already have some good bigs in Al Horford and um, Robert Williams, but Robert Williams kind of has his own injury problems, and Al Horford is getting up there in age. Um, so getting Porzingis, who I think, can't, when healthy, is an all-star level player, um, definitely changes the... Uh, landscape of this Celtics team because now if you run Porzingis at the four or Horford at the five or flip that however you want to do that you can run five out with this team um, you can have Brogdon at the one Brown at the two Tatum at the three and then any combination of those three bigs Porzingis Robert Williams or of course Al Horford so this has the potential to be the best starting five in the entire NBA um, and I might be higher on Porzingis than some other people out there, but I really do think when he's healthy, he's an all-star level player. And all they gave up for him was Marcus Smart, essentially. Uh, Marcus Smart, let's look at it from Memphis's standpoint. This, to me, doesn't really make much sense why Memphis got involved in this trade because uh, essentially their part of the trade was flipping Tyus Jones for Marcus Smart. And I think at this point in time, Tyus Jones is a better basketball player than Marcus Smart. Yes, Marcus Smart won Defensive Player of the Year back in 22. But this past season, uh, Marcus Smart showed clear signs of regression on both sides of the ball. And also, I hate the fit with him in Memphis. Yeah, um, he's going to be good or at least impactful for the first 25 games of the season when Jaws is serving out his suspension. But when John ja Morant gets back... Uh, Marcus Smart is going to quickly go to the bench. I don't know if Marcus Smart's going to be happy in that role. We've seen him uh, pretty vocal about wanting to have a big, like even a bigger position on the Celtics, and he was starting there. When Jaw gets back, um, he's definitely not starting over Jaw, of course, and he's not starting over Desmond Bain at the two guard position. So you're putting him on the bench, and you can't even play Marcus Smart and Jaw together. I guess they're kind of kind of be forced to do that in certain situations, but. The spacing between those two is not good, you know, and uh, Marcus Smart, he's not uh, Dylan Brooks bad when it comes to shooting, but he's not a good shoot shooter either, you know. Um, you look back to that Miami Heat series uh, with Boston, they were like daring Marcus Smart to shoot. They were leaving him wide open on the perimeter, and he would take them. Um, he has this tendency to... Um, it, it seems like anytime there's a close game in the fourth, and they need a big shot. It seemed like Marcus Smart always ended up being the one to take them. Now, there's a positive to that is, yeah, he's not afraid of the moment, but on the flip side, uh, he doesn't make them at a very high clip. So he's a little trigger happy. I know I probably shouldn't use that with when talking about Memphis and Ja, <laughs> but um, I like him as a player, of course. I do. I think he uh, was a much better fit for Boston than he is going to be with Memphis. I don't know how... Uh, long he will stay in Memphis. I, for me, I feel like they brought in Marcus Smart for more of his uh, leadership and uh, locker room presence as opposed to really his on-the-court on the play because 
again, I just, I don't really like his fit with Memphis very much. Um, in terms of, yeah, like the culture, um, he very much is resembling of those old grit and grind teams when they had like Tony Allen. He definitely does remind me of that Tony Allen mold. But in terms of the current iteration of this team with John and Bain and Jackson and Steven Adams, it's just not the best fit. Washington. Washington is the biggest loser in this trade by far and away. You gave up Chris Stapps Porzingis, a former All-Star who is coming off one of the best seasons of his career, was relatively healthy given his standards this season, coming off 23-8, and eight, and you got back Tyus Jones in return. Uh, not to mention that Boston got two first-rounders with Porzingis. So, like, well, I don't even know how you justify this. You have to, like, if you just put Chris Stapps Porzingis on the open market, you're telling me you can't get one first-round pick out of him. I just feel like there had, for for Washington, there had to be better offers out there for Chris Stapps. For me, this feels like they just wanted to get Chris Stapps out there as quick as possible. I feel like if they would have waited longer, they definitely could have gotten a better offer because essentially it was Chris Stapps for Tyus Jones. And Chris Stapps, yeah, despite his injury problems, he's a definitely a better NBA player than Tyus Jones. Tyus Jones has his value. I don't want it to come off like I dislike him or anything or don't think he's a good player. Tyus Jones is a really good NBA player. A lot of people consider him to be the best bench point guard in the entire NBA, which 1,000% has value. But is it worth a 7-3 all-star player who looks like he's starting to tread Back in the right direction, who's only 27 years old. Uh, even if you were doing a full reset in Washington, you didn't really even have to trade Porzingis. You could have even started to build around him. I wouldn't have, but I'd rather have him as an asset over Tyus Jones. And yeah, Tyus Jones might be able to fetch you a first-round pick at next year's trade deadline. But shouldn't Porzingis have been able to do that? You know, um, I just, I absolutely hate this. And you even combine with the fact that Bradley Beal as well, they got zero first round picks for Bradley Beal. They got swaps, but those swaps won't mean anything because Phoenix is going to have a better record than Washington over the, the, whenever those picks are. So for two former all-stars, Beal and Porzingis, you got zero first round picks and essentially turned those two into Tyus Jones and Landry Shannon. That is the tangible assets you got in return for two former All-Stars. I get the Beal situation is a little shaky just because he has a really, really massive contract and you were limited. You were very pigeonholed by that no trade clause. But again, you got zero first round picks between those two. It's absolutely mind blowing. Not a good start at all whatsoever um, for a start for Washington's rebuild. Um, but I give the Celtics a A++++ for pulling this off because you gave up Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart, I feel, was very um, expendable. Of course, Boston felt that way. I think Brogdon, at this point, is a better NBA player than Marcus Smart is. So you didn't really need Marcus Smart anymore. Um, and I think he just kind of wore out his welcome in Boston. And um, you get Porzingis, who um, has... Very high upside. You gave up very little for potentially something that could be very great for Boston. Um, Memphis, I don't really get why they got involved in this trade. And the Washington, I think it's a big F for this. So Boston doing Boston things, pulling off great trades and making other teams look foolish. Um, good on Brad Stevens because this is a hell of a pull for him. Um, let me know down in the comments. Am I too high on Porzingis? You guys have to let me know if I'm a too optimistic on what Porzingis can be going forward. Am I being too harsh on Memphis and Washington? Let me know down in the comments below. I really look forward to it. And also, uh, stay tuned for tomorrow. I will be dropping a draft review. Um, you know, the draft is tonight. And I'm really, really hoping that a big trade goes down. Um, obviously, all the talk is around that, that number three pick with Portland. Are they going to keep it and trade or and draft someone there whether it's Scooter Brandon Miller or someone else are they going to trade Dame uh, I've heard Miami and Milwaukee are very interested in Dame and also of course we have the Zion trade rumors as well so I'm really excited I hope something really big and exciting happens tonight but um if you made it this far I really appreciate you listening please leave a comment down there uh thanks for listening see ya